Yeah, so it really it was sort of a, a, a bit of a coincidence. You know, Valve had built a reference design for VR, um, and it had a hardware reference design, obviously had their Steam VR platform, but really didn't have a hardware partner. We at HTC were actually looking at some different categories to expand beyond the smartphone. One of those categories was entertainment. We looked at some different media type devices and gaming, but we had an opportunity to go meet with Valve at their offices, which happened to be just about five minutes away from our offices in Seattle. And we saw this, and much like you guys had coming out of that demo, we had the same reaction. This is amazing. And really, it was just we both looked at each other, Valve and HTC, and said, well, wait, we have manufacturing, we have design capabilities, we have global distribution. You guys have this great software and hardware reference design. Why don't we go do this together? And that was pretty much how it came about. And it's really, that was about a year ago, as we sit here now in early August. And it's moved very quickly, obviously, since then. Yeah, I mean, so we think the right way to bring a VR to market is to do it at the most premium experience. And so just some of the power that you get from the PC-based platform, just in, it's what enables that you know, 90 plus you know, hertz refresh rate, uh, what enables that precision tracking with our Lighthouse base stations. That's what gives you that full immersion, and most importantly, that ability to get up and walk around in the environment. So we think that's the ultimate VR experience, and that's the first one that we should come to market with. Uh, obviously, over time, I think you'll see various other types of form factors, whether those be mobile phone based, even all the way down to a cardboard based solution. Uh, I think they're all going to be good, but I think there'll be different use cases. It's a lot like. Oh, maybe in the future? In the future, oh, of yes. course. And we're certainly looking at different form factors over time. But right now, the focus is on let's get Vive to market. We think it's going to be a great product. And then we'll look and see what else makes sense from there. Yeah, it is a huge responsibility to be the first to, to be in market. We thought, first of all, we thought that was a very important statement to make uh, for the industry as a whole. So to give developers confidence that we are committed to putting a product in market by the end of this year uh, gives developers the confidence that this market's real. Um, so with that, again, it's kind of back to the reason we thought it's so important to do a PC-based solution, really showcase the, the full potential of VR uh, versus starting at the bottom and trying to move up. Um, obviously, we take the responsibility very seriously, as does Valve, and so we've been working very closely not only with them but with developers to make sure that that initial set of applications is really the right, going to deliver the right quality of experience that's going to set the tone for the industry. But I think it's also, you know, 2016 is an important year for the industry as a whole, and I think the fact that you have companies like not just HTC and Valve, but you have Oculus slash Facebook, you have Sony, you have even Microsoft in the AR space, you have all these big companies that are, that are now fully investing in this market. And so that's what's different from 20 years ago, where you had little hobbyists sort of tinkering and trying things. I think the technology has gotten to a point where it's now... We can now deliver that, that room scale experience and not drop frames and not make you feel sick when you're finished with the demo. Um, and you have big players in the marketplace. So I think I'm confident that, that 2016, that this is, this is real, we're no longer in that experimentation yeah. phase. Uh, no, so it'll be a general consumer product. I mean, now obviously we know with any of these new technologies that there's, there's a certain audience that buys the first units. Obviously gamers have been waiting for this for a long time, so we know through our relationship with Valve that there'll be a lot of gamers who are going to be very eager to get their hands on this. We also know that there's a group that I'll call innovators, early adopters, people People like me who like to buy the first HD TVs or the first 4K TVs now, uh, who just like to, to, to experience these new things. And we know that there's a group of those people that are also very excited to get their hands on it. But the, the potential for this market obviously goes much more beyond that. It goes into broader gaming and potentially goes into other areas like entertainment, travel, education, all these markets. So that won't happen immediately, but I think when you look at where we're going to be as an industry in two to three years, it's very real that you're going to see scenarios not just in gaming, but outside of gaming. Yeah, well, I mean, room scale, we think, is just a big differentiator that adds an extra level of presence to the VR experience. So, you know, I think all these experiences are very immersive, you know, whether it's Oculus, Morpheus, somebody else. But when you start to add that extra dimension of, of, of not only being able to look around, but actually to get up and walk around and explore from different angles. You probably tried the paint demo. You could walk around and paint from the other side. You could look at it in three dimensions. 
it just adds a sense of reality and immersion to it that, that we haven't seen with anything else out there. So it, you know, it's going to be very exciting to see how developers take advantage of that capability, how they, they develop their storylines, if it's a game or even in other ty types of vertical markets. You know, what, what does room scale actually mean? You know, what do, how do you move from one spot to another? How do we make sure that it's adding to the experience and not just something we do because we can? Yeah, we do. So again, we've we've optimized around in, in you know in the states we call it a fifteen foot by fifteen foot space. Four, I guess four. four and a half <laughs> meters by four and a half meters would be the equivalent. Um, that's what we can support. And, you know, potentially we could support more, but that's really what we've optimized around right now. But that doesn't mean it's a requirement. You know, we can have a seated experience if that's what people just want to sit and, and and move around. That's fine. We can we can turn off the, the movement piece. So we do think it's interesting though, and I think that that ability to move around again, we'll have to see what the scenarios are in each of the respective games. But it's definitely not a requirement. It's just an extra feature. around treadmills and other types of accessories. Yeah, we haven't done any work around those right now. I think there's, I mean, I've seen some of them, so I think it's potentially interesting, but that goes back to that question of, you know, how developers want to work with room scale. You know, one, one idea would be you do have some sort of accessory, but another might be that you just build that into your gameplay where maybe you walk to a certain space and when you stand on that X, it transports you almost like portal into, a, into another area. So I think that's going to be really in the hands of developers, but I, I think you can certainly see over time where there'll be other types of accessories and peripherals. But right now our focus has really been on, on just working directly with the developers and using the, the system as is, I think is quite good. Well, we haven't released the final spec, so you know we'll do that. You know, later this fall, we'll, we'll talk about you know the actual what the SKU lineup is, what comes in the kit. But the but the plan now is certainly to have the HMD and the controllers. I mean, you need the controllers to be a part of that experience. They're wireless controllers, so you know for for, for those of you who have the demo, you know what it's like. It's feeling it's like you have hands, and, and having being able to grab things, punch things, shoot things, pick up things, very important to the experience. And in fact, really, really essential. So that'll definitely be part of that that lineup uh, with. with the HMD inside. Uh, no, so, so right now the focus has been on you know one HMD, two controllers, and that's again we, we want to make a great experience out of the box. Uh, of course, maybe people, in the future, people have asked us in the future could theoretically a second person be tracked in the same room or other types of peripherals. The answer is always yes, of course, that's possible. Uh, but again, I think with these new categories, you know, back to your original question about the responsibility that comes with being first to market, we really want to focus on making that initial experience a great one before we go off and start adding too many different things around it. So, yeah, all in due time. We've never had a single person have a problem of, of sickness with, with, Vive, with the Vive developer kit. Um, so again, I, I think there's reasons for that. I think largely it's based upon the, the quality of our tracking system, using the lasers, the very low latency, uh, the 90 hertz refresh. I think all those things combined eliminate the, the, the fear of latency. And so uh, obviously that's something we continue to focus on because, because that's critical. I mean, for the industry, forget even just HTC, for the industry it's important that, that we eliminate that problem. Yeah, we can't. We haven't. Again, we haven't revealed the specs yet, so I'm going to stand behind that answer. Uh, you know, we are looking at, at at audio solutions. Obviously, that's an important part of the overall experience. But uh, I'll have to say, tease it and say, stay tuned for for the fall when we can talk about that in much more detail. Yeah, again, we haven't disclosed, you know, what what content will be available at launch and what will be included versus not included. Uh, but of course, we're looking at all those things. I know, I know you we, we get asked all the time, okay. and the answer is always the same. We haven't disclosed the content lineup yet, and we certainly can't speak to what Valve has planned. I think but we should expect something. I, mean, I, I would wait until the fall, and we'll, we'll, we'll we release that, our so launch and the lineup then. We think that Highlight 3 would be the uh, perfect. Uh, <laughs> A lot of people think that. Perfect for that situation. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, really, uh, both a, a design uh, choice, probably does a design choice more than anything else. Um, it was just what we thought delivered the optimal experience.
nothing we're prepared to announce at this time, but of course we, we agree with you that ergonomics are very important to the experience. And if you think, look at HTC's history uh, around industrial design for products like this, this is really where our strengths lie. So I think you can expect to see some really interesting things in terms of ergonomics and overall just design. Yeah, even the dev kit supports glasses. So if you walked in yeah. there with glasses on, that thing would fit right over your glasses very comfortably. Inside. Yeah, inside. Oh, okay. That's correct. Yeah. We, we can't talk about any of the specs yet. <laughs> it's a good question, though. Yeah, right now, the plan is, is, is PC or you know, Windows, Linux, and Mac. In the SDK? Yeah. Actually, I don't know the answer to that right now. I'd have to follow up with you. Yeah, that's been a real plus with this, is that, you know, again, obviously most games in the world are developed in Unity or Unreal. Um, so, you know, for us, you know, working with those same sets of developers and having them bring some of their content into the VR environment is, is, is not forcing them to learn an entirely new develop envir development environment, which is positive. Now, I don't want to make that sound as though it's easy to just take an existing game and port it over. It's not that simple. And even if it were, we'd want the gameplay to be developed in a different way to take advantage of the unique capabilities of VR. But in terms of just giving people a familiar uh, language with which to work in, we're, we're confident that we've done that. Yeah, the developer reaction's been, you know, phenomenal, really, from the day we announced the product to, you know, six to eight weeks ago when they first started getting their development kits. You've probably seen online a number of the unboxing videos that people have put out there. So I think they're excited about a couple things. I mean, obviously, they're excited about the Valve relationship and just the overall strength and quality of the platform. Uh, but they're also excited of the fact that this is real, that it's happening, that HTC's committed and Valve's committed. And we've talked about putting a product in market this calendar year. That gives them that confidence that, that, that it's okay to go invest in this, that it's going to happen this time, and it's not that 20-year dream that we've all been waiting for. Uh, I, you know, it's hard to say. I think we've had interest across the board. Um, so, you know, big studios, independent studios, a lot of the entertainment studios are very interested in this. So we've had a wide variety of interest across the board. I think everybody's trying, you know, everybody knows that this is going to be a transformative technology and so they want to put a toe in the water and go in. But I do, I think as an industry, we don't really know yet what, you know, we don't know what gameplay exactly looks like in VR. We don't know what entertainment is exactly in VR. Is it, are you watching an entire movie? Are you interacting in the movie? So. Again, that's what's fun about this category is every, you know, consumers will figure it out, developers will figure it out. We can have this conversation two years from now and probably be very clear that here's how you build a game in VR and here's what a good one is and here's what a bad one is. Here's what watching a, a, a t television program looks like. Here's what it shouldn't look like. But right now it's a lot of experimentation. Yeah, it'll ultimately be in retail. We just don't have we don't have any timing to, to disclose on that yet. But uh, clearly, the plan. It's important. You know, retailers are very excited about this, as you can imagine. Uh, number one, because they believe in it as a big category. Uh, but it's also very important in terms of you know people. It's important to showcase this to people. So you need a place to go see this. That's part of why we're here at Gamescom. It's part of why we have a truck rolling around North America that's setting up demos for consumers. It's all about. There's no way to describe the experience that you guys just had in there. I, I went through the same thing when I first went to the demo. There's no way to describe it. So we need to get it out in front of people and let them go through that demo and say, oh, okay, now I understand. Um, and that's important, again, for everybody in the industry. I, you know, We're hoping that, that the other players in the market will, will continue to invest in showcasing it to the market. Because we need people to understand what VR is and what it isn't. Yeah, it's far too early to, under, to tell what, what our long-term roadmap is. I mean, obviously, we've done a lot of internal work on that, but right now, the focus is very much on getting Vive to market, making it a great experience, and then, you know, as time goes on, we'll have subsequent announcements about other things we're looking at. Yeah, so we're looking at, you know, whether, whether it's a truck or it's just other kind of pop-up locations like we have here at Gamescom, we're obviously looking at more ways to invest to get to more countries, just expose it to more people. Both for Spain, because Spain is very enthusiastic. Hey, we, 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 we announced the product in Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. where it all started. Uh, we can see we have very 
you, you guys are very knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, all is. I think all We think that that is uh, that's all. Um, okay. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, we're really. And I send you uh, the most impressive. We are. Well, it's good to hear from guys like you who you guys um, know this stuff. So.